after announcing his retirement on February 2nd, 2021, I go inside the mind of five times CrossFit Games champ, Matt Frazier. I'll take you throughout his story. We'll look at his mindset throughout his early teenage years and into his competitive career. I'll show you how his approach to the sport of CrossFit was so much different than all other competitors. Stick around to the end where I give you his 10 traits for success throughout his career and how you can implement them in your own life. I'm always trying to build, I'm trying to be a better person. I'm trying to- What's going on everyone? My name is Nick and welcome to my channel where I help you carve your own path by building a high performance mindset. It's difficult to reach the pinnacle of any sport, but what's more difficult is actually staying there. Despite being pretty low key about his mindset, as a five time champ, Matt Frazier has one of the toughest mindsets around. First, let's jump in and go straight to Matt's childhood. This phase of Matt's life is pursuing an Olympic dream. Growing up in a household where both your parents are athletes is one thing, but Matt's parents were actually both Olympians in figure skating. Despite coming from a gifted pool of genetics, Matt's physique wasn't this strong, muscular frame that we're familiar with today. And sadly enough, Matt was often made fun of as a kid for his heavy set frame. He even mentions a story about this that changed his mentality as a young kid. He was playing kickball on the school playground and accidentally kicked the ball to the side. Another kid jumps in and yells, go get the ball fat. Yikes. Harsh. After feeling completely embarrassed, Matt went home that night and found his parents' treadmill in the basement and started running and doing push-ups. He said, this will never happen to me again. Again, at the age of 12, Matt actually stumbles upon a new sport, the sport of Olympic weightlifting. Into his early teenage years, he showed a natural ability to succeed in the sport and it led to a junior national championship title. When he started to notice that he had a future in this sport, he turned all his focus on making the Olympic team. When other kids were taking a more traditional route in sports like baseball, basketball, and football, Matt was in the weight room. He was actually being scouted by the United States Olympic team. However, Matt's teenage years weren't just filled with trophies and medals from Olympic weightlifting meets. He actually faced a lot of demons growing up. Despite his interest from coaches at the Olympic Training Center, Matt actually struggled with alcohol addiction throughout his teenage years. And at 17 years old, when he almost lost everything, he knew it was time to make a change. This turning point came when he approached his father to tell him the trouble that he'd been into, the fines that he had received, and his father didn't even blink an eye. He had become so accustomed to Matt being in trouble so frequently that it didn't even phase him. Heartbroken and ashamed, Matt cut the cord on alcohol and began this new phase of life, sobriety. Then shortly after graduation, Matt headed off to Colorado Springs, Colorado to live and train at the Olympic Training Center as a resident athlete. Before we go on, let's take a look at Matt's mindset throughout this phase of his life, pursuing an Olympic dream. Some of the main qualities that Matt shows throughout this time period are perfecting technique and the fundamentals. Matt learned through weightlifting to perfect the basic fundamentals and technique. Whether it's sport, business, or life in general, this approach to build the foundation allows you to have a stronger chance at long-term success. Patience and work ethic. The general concept of Olympic weightlifting is very simple, but it's far from easy. Matt learned early on that building a strong and explosive frame takes years. Then couple that with learning how to perfect your technique, and now you're talking about intense focus day in and day out for the long term. And finally, real change starts with a purpose greater than yourself. Temptation and obstacles will try to prevent you from accomplishing your dreams, but if you don't have a reason bigger than yourself to succeed, it can be a slippery slope. When Matt's father was so accustomed to his negative path, it gave Matt a purpose to be better, not for his sake, but for those around him. Now we go into the next phase of Matt's life, and this phase is depression and stumbling onto a new path. This next phase in Matt's life is one that nobody expected. As a weightlifting phenom, he started to see his dreams of making the Olympic team unfold right in front of his eyes. But then while going through workouts at the Olympic Training Center, Matt injured his back. He mentions that the training environment was not conducive to recovery, but instead more of a push through the pain mentality. Now, if you've ever played competitive sports, you know how easy it is to slip into this mentality. He knew that something was wrong, but the coaches pushed him to keep going anyway. After finally going to the doctor, Matt finds out the prognosis. A broken L5 vertebrae in two places and he needed surgery. At only 19 years old and experiencing a major back injury like this, his weightlifting career started to take a turn. This led Matt down a road of depression and lack of direction. I mean, many of us have been through a situation, but we're talking about building your entire lifestyle around this one goal, 
hours and hours, years and years of training each and every day to perfect this one craft, it's normal to feel heartache and disappointment. After leaving the sport of weightlifting behind, Matt started to think about what's next for me. What do I need to do to first make some money, but more importantly, what type of career do I want to look at? So right off the bat, he headed to Alberta, Canada to work in the oil fields. After a brief stint there and a little money in his pocket, he enrolls in the University of Vermont where he double majored in mechanical engineering and engineering management. And they say athletes aren't smart. While in school and in a new routine, he found himself out of shape and eating a very poor diet. He's mentioned before, I wasn't going to change what I eat, so I needed to find a gym so I could eat what I want. Sticking to what he knows, he actually looked for a local CrossFit affiliate to join not to do CrossFit, but a place that he could perform his weightlifting. It's actually pretty common amongst CrossFit gyms to allow Olympic weightlifters to come in and do their training there just because Olympic platforms are so hard to find. Not to mention using the bumper plates so you don't have to figure out how to get a 300 pound lift from overhead back to the ground in a quiet manner. After finding Champlain Valley CrossFit and talking with the owner, Matt found a place that he could lift in the corner without disturbing the classes. Now before we go on here, let's break down Matt's mindset throughout this phase of his life, depression and stumbling on a new path. Number one, doors can close at any moment. Defeat takes time to bounce back from, and you don't always have to know the perfect step. Take the time, recover, and get back on your feet. Number two, your old path may influence your new path. The more you invest in something, the more pain you'll feel when you fall short. However, oftentimes when we fail, it unexpectedly leads us down a road to better paths and experiences. And number three, greatness is a choice. Matt chose to double major in mechanical engineering and engineering management. This path is a difficult one, but what's more impressive is the desire to be great. Although he accumulated many honors in the weightlifting world, he took the same effort toward his education and chose a path to push his mental limits. Now let's move on to the next phase of Matt's life, starting a side hustle in two times second place. After being impressed with his abilities to move massive weights with impeccable technique, the owner of the gym and his girlfriend approached Matt and talked him into doing a few CrossFit classes every now and then. Despite not being interested in CrossFit at all, he showed that he could pick up the movements rather quickly. We're talking about some of the more complex movements that take CrossFitters months, if not years to accomplish. And if for some reason he wasn't able to figure it out, he'd go into the corner, work on it, and come back like he's done it for years. Being a true athlete, he's mentioned before, I don't mind being bad at something, I just don't want people to make fun of me for being bad at it. Now, after a little discussion, the owner of the gym convinces Matt that he should try this CrossFit competition. He says, there's a $500 cash prize and I'll even pay your entry fee. After deciding why not, he goes for it. He takes home first place, $500 in his pocket, and has a new outlook on the sport. Not your typical outlook though. Instead, he asks himself, what could this actually turn into? Me just hitting these local competitions weekend after weekend, making some side money. That was all the convincing he needed to start a tour of the Northeast United States, going to all the local competitions and running the table. Then in 2013, less than one year in the sport, Matt qualifies for regionals. This was the second of three phases in the CrossFit game season. If you advance from regionals, you make the CrossFit games. This feat alone showed just how much natural ability Matt had. Despite his impressive regional performance, he finished fifth, only two spots out from a qualifying spot to the CrossFit Games. Not bad for eight months in the sport. As expected, 2014 rolls around and Matt takes a different approach to regionals. He comes in with a little more experience, a little more confidence, and clinches his first trip to the CrossFit Games. The attention he gained from winning his region led many in the community to think, could this possibly be the year that the reigning champion Rich Froning is dethroned? As a young, inexperienced CrossFitter, Matt actually finished second at the CrossFit Games just behind Rich Froning. He stated many times that he was so proud of that second place finish. Then we fast forward into 2015. Rich Froning has retired from individual competition in the sport and Matt is now the favorite to win it all. Throughout the year, Matt continues to show impressive performances that lead many to believe he is here to take the number one spot. Keep in mind he's training hard in the gym, but he frequently posts pictures of eating a pint of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Now the 2015 games come around and even though Matt has been training hard in the gym, he essentially tries to just show up and win with no outside the gym preparation. We're talking very little effort towards things like recovery with sleep and nutrition. Over the course of the 2015 games, he develops a large lead over the pack, but it is slowly dwindled down until the last day of competition. 
in the final event, it is essentially a winner-take-all scenario between him and competitor Ben Smith. Matt experiences a catastrophe through this workout and fails to maintain his lead, crowning Ben Smith the champion and Matt finishing second the second year in a row. Now, Matt mentions that this second place finish in 2015 was different than the second place finish in 2014. He says, I thought I could outtrain a bad diet and prove a point. But after finishing second and failing to maintain the margin of victory he held, he was completely disgusted at himself. He asks, do I even want to do this? For one year, if I really dedicate myself, how far can I actually take this? Now, real quick, before we go on, let's break down Matt's mindset throughout this phase in his life side hustle money, and two times second place. Number one, momentum starts small, but can lead you down a life-changing path. Matt found he could make a little side money competing. The success naturally led him to compete in more serious competitions. Without any idea of where it could take him, he ended up finding success on the larger scale of CrossFit. And number two, you must change if you want your results to change. Matt realized no matter what he did in the gym, it wasn't going to take him to that number one spot. It's the small things that no one sees that ties your goal together. A better diet, better habits, and a better mindset to the craft was necessary to move forward. Now, let's take a look at this final phase of Matt's career, taking a new approach and creating a legacy. After taking a detailed assessment of his problem areas, Matt started to take a different approach to the sport. Instead of eating whatever he wanted, he started to fuel his body for performance. Instead of keeping poor sleeping habits, he prioritized sleep. Instead of randomly training, he implemented more focus on his weaknesses. As you would expect, the 2016 CrossFit Games come around and Matt takes first. Then the Nike sponsored athlete takes the momentum from that first championship and turns it into four more, resulting in five times CrossFit Games champion. Now, it's obvious that he's created a legacy in this sport, but what's more important is to look at his approach and how different it was to other competitors throughout this time. Matt implemented three main things aside from changing his nutrition. Number one, getting specialty coaches. Throughout this period from 2016 to 2021, Matt found specialty coaches to help him work on his weak areas. For example, he struggled with a max deadlift, so he hired someone who was great at the deadlift to teach him how to deadlift. Early on, he struggled with running, so he hired a coach that focuses primarily on running to help him out. Most do not use this approach and stick to their one main coach. Number two, periodizing the entire year and living like a professional. If you've ever been around CrossFit, you know that it's often hitting high intensity day after day. For an everyday person, a one hour class at a local CrossFit affiliate is plenty of intensity. However, without adequate recovery, it can lead to eventual burnout and an extremely taxed nervous system. So now you can imagine the toll of one hour a day and what happens if you don't prioritize recovery. Now take a four to eight hour training day and you have Matt's program. If he does not periodize his training program over a day-to-day -day level, but also over the course of a year with things like building aerobic endurance, increasing anaerobic threshold, and keeping his strength up, then he'll stop progressing. This goes for your everyday CrossFitter too. Random programming will give you progress in the short term, but halting progress for the long term. Now, keep in mind that he changed his life to live like a professional athlete. He took who he wanted to become and aligned a lifestyle to fit that person. This includes things like a regular training and eating schedule, frequent massage and deep tissue work, daily sauna and ice baths, limiting blue light exposure before bed, and 60 to 90 minutes of mental decompression to keep his mind sharp and his intensity up. And number three, he implemented an off-season to focus on the CrossFit Games. Some high-level CrossFit competitors refuse to take an off-season. As a professional in the sport, the amount of workout volume and mental stress takes a huge toll on the body. In all other sports, there's a scheduled off-season to allow the body to recover. We're talking about a competitive season that lasts eight to 10 months out of the year for the highest level athletes. Now, the way that Matt structures his training is to peak at the CrossFit Games to get his best performance at that time. Most other athletes in the sports focus on peaking at the time to qualify for the games, not the actual games. This shows the absolute confidence needed to be a champion, not just a competitor. Now, before we go on, let's break down Matt's mindset throughout this phase of his life, taking a new approach and creating a legacy. Number one, take an honest assessment of where you are. It's clear if Matt wouldn't have had an honest conversation about what needs to change, it's very likely he wouldn't have had the same success. Completely dominating the field. Ego aside, assess where you are and make the changes for your long-term success. And number two, 
Be uncommon amongst the common. When the masses are doing something one way and one way only, don't be afraid to challenge that thinking. Successful people prioritize what works best for them regardless of the crowd. Now, after looking at the mindset and the story of Matt Frazier, let's take a look at his mindset and what we can use to implement in our own lives. His 10 traits for success start like this. Number one, going all in on yourself. If you really have serious goals, what's holding you back? You can see through Matt's story, going all in on yourself requires discipline, hard work, confidence, and it is not a sure shot. After all, you have one shot in this life. What do you have to lose? Bet on yourself. Number two, strategic thinking. Matt knew he would not see real progress without a strategy. After taking back-to-back -back second place finishes, he revamped his strategy to become a five-time champion. Now look at how you approach your own life. Are you okay with finishing second place in everything you do and just happy to be here? Or are you constantly refining what you do on a daily basis looking to find real success? Number three, hard work pays off. Matt started using the hashtag HWPO early on in his career. It's so simple to say, but requires so much to execute. It's the pure definition of believing in yourself and knowing your effort today is not wasted. Number four, seek help from the experts. By reaching out to experts on his weaknesses, Matt elevated his entire game. If you need specific knowledge to move the needle in your life, Stop wasting time and go find an expert that can help you with your weak areas. Number five, relentless effort. Matt has said many times that he trained scared, scared that he would have a lapse in judgment that would cost him a title. So what did he do? He trained relentlessly to conquer this fear. Now, do you put the same focus on the things that you want in your life? Do you approach your goals with absolute relentless effort? Does the fear of failure drive you to work even harder? Number six, build a solid support system. Matt's fiance, Sammy, has taken care of his day-to-day -day tasks throughout his career, but most importantly, his nutrition. He also has an agent that's responsible for the business side of his career, not to mention the coaches earlier that help him succeed. You see, Matt has designed a complete system around him to help him succeed. Now take a look at your own life. Do those around you actually help you succeed? Do they build you up and support your goals? Whether it's your inner circle or your partner, support is undoubtedly a huge factor in success. Number seven, disrupt the norm. As he grew in his competitive career, he implemented things that other competitors didn't. An offseason and hiring sport-specific coaches to help him succeed allowed him the opportunity to capitalize on opponents' weaknesses. Just because things have been done a certain way for years does not mean that that's the most efficient and effective way for you. Number eight, killer instinct. If you ever watch Matt compete, you see that he has a competitive fire that is unmatched. When opponents are down, he pushes the gas pedal even further. When it comes to your own scenario, how can you implement a killer instinct at a towards outpacing your competitors, or better yet, the old version of you. Number nine, an end to one chapter doesn't always mean the end of your story. When Matt injured his back, doctors said his lifting days were over. He then went on to become the most decorated CrossFitter in history. When a path of yours reaches its end, it's not the end of the road. Opportunity comes in the most unexpected ways and it's your responsibility to capitalize. And number 10, keep a close circle. Matt's noted many times that he does not have a big inner circle. After all, who you surround yourself with is who you become. Depending on what you want, this can lead to some very tough decisions. Decisions that include removing the things or the people in your life that detract you from reaching your goals. I'm talking about the people that bring you down. Then this allows you to really give those people in your circle the attention that they deserve. Now, I hope you enjoyed going inside the mind of Matt Frazier. If you know someone that'll enjoy this video, go ahead and share it with them. Also, please like the video. And if you wanna see more content related to building a high performance mindset and lifestyle development, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.